Barcelona has finally wrapped up the first phase of its long-awaited tram connection through the city center. In 2004, they built two separate tram lines on the eastern and western outskirts, but the project to connect them took a decade-long political battle to get approved. Twenty years later, we are finally seeing trams running around the beautiful Catalan modernist buildings, though there is still a bit of a sour taste from the long wait. This city used to have over 200 kilometers of tram tracks, yet despite all our technology, now it takes nearly three years and a huge amount of money to build just a short 1.8 kilometer line. It feels like Western civilization took a wrong turn. But where? I found a couple of interesting documents that give us some insight into this shift. These are financial reports from the Barcelona Tram Company for the years 1958 and 1959. By then, Western civilization had already taken a few wrong turns. The tram system was in crisis. And within a decade, it had been completely overtaken by cars. Yet the city was still expanding, and during those two years, there were actually two tramline construction projects underway. A one-kilometer line to connect Bire Amat with a newly developed neighborhood of Berdum, and a 1.5-kilometer line from Maria Cristina to Zona Universitaria. Yes, that the same route that today's newly rebuilt tram also covers. The construction volumes and timelines from back then are pretty close to the current tram extension, which is 1.8 km long and kicked off in March 2022, making for an interesting comparison. These reports break down the funds spent on installing rails and overhead wires. However, they also include costs for maintaining the existing network without separating the extension costs. So let's apply a handy rule of thumb from the almighty ChatGPT, which assumes that renovation costs are about six times lower than initial construction costs. This should help us get a clearer idea of the actual spending on new tram lines. In 1958 and 1959, Barcelona managed to build 2.5 kilometers of double tram track and repair 7 kilometers of single track, all for a total of 14 million pesetas, meaning the cost per kilometer of new double track came out to about 4.5 million pesetas. And only after doing all those calculations, I stumbled across this publication on SpanishRailway.com. The author, who seemed to have access to historical documents that I couldn't find online, claims that the one kilometer line to Berdum cost 4.1 million pesetas, and the one and a half kilometer line to Zona Universitaria costs, well, one and a half times more. My estimate ended up being only 10% off. Now, let's convert this to 2024 euros. We'll use an online calculator that not only adjusts for inflation, but also factors in metrics like average labor costs, which is the most relevant here. According to the calculator, 4.1 million pesetas in 1959 translates to about 5.5 million euros in today's terms. So, is 5.5 million euros per kilometer of double track a lot? Let's compare this to the current tram extension. I'll use a report from the Public Audit Office of Catalonia, which breaks down the costs for each stage of the project. Let's take a look at lots 2, 3 and 4, that's the new line itself, from Girona Street to Gran Via, covering 1.8 kilometers. Lot 6 includes the essential supplies, rails, fasteners, and switches. The price for lots 2 to 4 also includes work unrelated to the tram system, since the street layout was redesigned to better accommodate the tram. Fortunately, costs were split. The transport agency only covered tram infrastructure, while the city hall paid for the rest. For the tram tracks and installation alone, the cost came to 15.6 million euros, 
or almost 8.7 million euros per kilometer. That's nearly 60% more than in 1960. This number is still a bit inflated though. For example, it includes the installation of the Alstom APS ground level power supply system. In this part of the train line, there is no overhead wire for aesthetic reasons. Instead, it uses a third rail system on the ground, split into short sections that only get energized when the tram is directly above them, so you can safely step on it at any other time. It's heavily integrated into the rail track itself, so it makes sense that the installation budget can't really be separated. But a direct comparison to 1959 is just not possible, since this technology didn't even exist back then. The rail track itself is also very different. In 1959, the rails were laid directly into pre dug trenches in the pavement, then tightly encased with asphalt or cobblestone. Today, the rails are set into a reinforced concrete slab the concrete has a layer of rubber or polymer beneath it. Rubber or polymer sleeves are placed around the base of the rail, and the brackets holding the rails in place might also have rubber or other flexible materials where they contact the rails. All these measures are designed to reduce vibration, making the tram ride smoother and the street quieter. The tracks are then covered with grass for aesthetics and to reduce heat in the summer. In Barcelona's climate, this grass also needs to be irrigated. Is it worth paying 60% more for tram tracks like this? It's hard to say objectively, but the economic costs of laying down these modern rails is even lower than that of laying down those primitive, rumbling, corroding, easily displaced rails in the 1960s. However, the 15 million euros for track installation only makes up to 15% of the tram extension construction budget. So what else is in there? Stops? That's less than 2 million euros, practically a rounding error. Almost 15 million went into building a new traction substation, boosting capacity at the existing one and adapting all 18 existing tram cars to work with a new ground level power supply system. Another 15 million was spent on buying three new tram cars. This is a far cry from the $2,000 per unit that the Barcelona tram company was paying for second hand PCC Washington trams in 1961. 6 million euros covered all the electronic systems signaling, communication, ticketing, CCTV, etc, etc. 46 million euros went into redesigning Diagonal Avenue for the tram. Because if you add tram tracks, you need to remove car lanes. If you remove car lanes, you might as well add more sidewalks and bike lanes. If you're putting tracks on concrete slabs, it's the last chance to overhaul all the underground utilities, and so on. And as a cherry on top, 7 million euros were spent on improving the Gloria Square Park, where the tram will pass through. To sum it all up, building tram infrastructure today is about 60% more expensive than it was in the 1960. But this infrastructure is also 60% better, so it's worth it. What really makes this tram project so costly isn't the tram infrastructure itself. It's about integrating it into the urban environment and doing it so thoroughly that no future politician will ever be able to talk about removing it. And if anyone still isn't convinced that 1.8 kilometers of tram infrastructure is worth 100 million euros, I suggest they visit my city in Siberia, Novosibirsk. In 2016, they built a 2.3 km tram extension for just 1.15 million euros. That's 500,000 euros per kilometer, and that includes everything. Overhead wires, stops, a turnaround loop. 
10 times cheaper. Is it 10 times worse? I would say it's only two to three times worse. So depending on what your needs are, the Siberian lifestyle might be a bargain. We'll continue exploring new and old rail transit infrastructure around the world. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching and take care.